Can you buy XRP now? Yes, you can, but I'm not buying XRP right now. And I'll talk about that in today's video. All right, team. So I want you to know that everyone is always free to do whatever you want to do with your trading because this channel is not trading or financial uh, advice uh, or investment advice of any kind. It's just for comedic entertainment, educational purposes only. So everything you see is just my opinions only and what I'm doing. I can never tell anybody that you should buy or you should sell. I can only announce and say what I'm doing. And why am I not an XRP? There's a, there's a lot of reasons that I'm not an XRP and I have a lot of peace about it. We're going to go over the charts, but you also got to know my opinions behind the matter. So I feel like I'm not going to miss it. And I'm also letting the Lord help me to be the trader that I needed to be rather than just the trader I want to be. There's a lot of intraday trades that I would normally just be taking if I wasn't concerned about everyone. Um, because as you can tell, markets do a lot of times where they'll turn quickly on a dime, like just a small window of time. And then we'll go up and we'll come down and we'll go up and we'll come down sometimes very, very quickly, almost without warnings. And to know when those times happen uh, requires a lot of things you have to do. So one of the things you have to do um, when you're taking when you're wanting to be an intraday traders, you have to really look at everything in alignment and you constantly have to be looking at the alignment. And what I mean by the alignment is you can find a trade that will make sense on a five minute, 15 minute or uh, even one hour chart. But those those five, uh, those five minutes have to match up to the 10 and the 30. They have to have to be in alignment if you're going to be taking that that moment. And those 30s have to be in alignment with, you know, the 60, the which is the one hour, the 60 minutes. And so everything has to be moving in sync because you could be trading and find a perfect analysis and your analysis is right. But then if you miss something on a higher time frame, well, that higher time frame is going to uh, come against uh, that, you know, the smaller time frame every now and then. It doesn't always show up, but there are analyses that are on on those charts. So when you're looking at a chart, it's not just the chart you're drawing. It's not just the chart you have before your eyes. You have to be looking at all the charts in and and and, and do it on one view. And so that's just kind of why it's it's a lot to trade XRP. Um, it's kind of a lot more complex than I than I, than it would seem in some ways if you're intraday trading it, meaning you're taking all the trades. And that's because if you're not, if you're, you may be looking at a chart on your phone and it, it's not going to be, um, it can be set up, but there can be not a bigger setup on the higher time frames. So with that principle in mind, I'm looking at what I'm doing here, at, uh, you know, as, as uh, making everything public. You know, somebody asked me earlier this year, they said, would you, you know, why don't you start a YouTube channel? And I told that person, um, I believe it was uh, Antonella in the Telegram community um, back when it was my only platform. And I said to her, well, it's a lot in it. There's a lot involved in it. So um, I, I just can't see it happening right now. So maybe later in the year. Well, the reason I was that that was my attitude was because the real the real thing I was thinking about was that the type of trader I was doesn't fit YouTube. I mean, there's times I'll take maybe, you know, two trades a day. Um, sometimes I was taking, you know, four trades a week. Guys, you, I'm going to be real honest with you in these conversations. I get flack for just trades that I make that same day. Even, you know, and I'm making big calls. Like, you got to think, guys, when I'm, when I'm talking about XRP, I'm talking about targets that are up here. You know, I'm talking about 3 to $12 targets. Okay. And, and this, is, this is a logarithmic view. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you what your view is. Okay. This is your view. Okay. So when I'm talking about taking trades, okay, and I'm talking about $3 targets, we have a long way to go. For these current ranges i mean it's you, we're talking to, we're talking very very big way to to go this is a daily chart that i'm looking at and if we're going to be you know trading on, on these scales and hitting those targets i mean and that's just the intro the three dollars is just the intro my real trade target you guys already know right now before we before we start before i'm really going to be taking profits is here at twelve dollars okay so that's the type of trading that i feel the lord's leading me to do and it's because this is not like a speedboat. This is a, a more of a, not a pleasure cruise, but like a cruise ship. And, and maybe that's in alignment with the type of dream that I had when I, when I was, when I was back here, because you gotta, the memory, you know, if you watch the dream I had about the cruise ship that I was, that was standing on that, that platform on off to the side of the cruise ship, um, you know, watch, watch the dream and you're going to see what I mean. It's, it's almost one of my first videos. It's called, uh, and you'll see me doing this. It's a, it's a message to my wife. Um, but I'm letting you guys know that this is the type of trading that I'm I'm doing, and I feel like the Lord is leading me to trade in such a matter that 
the masses can follow. And if that means that I have to be a different type of trader than I currently am, then, then let it be so. But I feel peace about it. I feel like what I'm doing um, is right. I mean, look how far. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to skew the view right now. I'm just going to go to where we're at, okay? And I'm going to show everyone so you guys know what I'm doing. And then we're going to get into the charts, okay? So this is a daily chart, okay? So, so far this morning, okay, XRP went all the way up to $1.39. And, and, and since the time of this morning, uh, we're at $1.32. We went down almost seven. We went up seven cents and came down almost seven cents in just the time we've been having this conversation. And right now it's 32.68. Okay. So guys, look, I'm going to move this slowly. Watch. Okay. I'm not going to change the rate of speed. We're going to get to my targets. You see it moving? This is my finger going. Okay. These are incrementals. We're still going. Still going. We're only at $2 right now. So for those of you who are not really thinking in proportion of what's actually happening, now we're in $3. For me to be taking every single trade, every single trade that you may think is on the table, it may not be on the table for the people who are following me. I've been doing my best. I'm still going up. $4, $5. I haven't changed the rate of my speed. Trust me, I'm a musician, okay? Now, guys, for those who follow me, there's two people who are following me. There are day traders, swing traders, and there are our, our, our holders, like investment holders. Still going up, $6. Those holders, guys, are people that are long-term holders. And there's people who are like, don't have any idea on how to trade or when to buy or when to sell. $8. So we have so much things that are at stake. And not everybody knows how to place order entries. So for me to be buying and publishing publicly uh, so many trades a week, I, I just, it, it, uh, it's not optimized for what God wants me to be. $10. Now, um, look, $10.90, $11. We're still going up. So what you guys, when I'm posting these charts with some of these higher targets and you guys are thinking, oh man, this is, this is just a quick thing. No, now we're here, $10. I'm sorry, $12.30. I'm going to mark it. Many of you guys thinking about trading is different. When we hit our targets, great. Fantastic. Okay. So if God doesn't want me to publicly be running the ship, so to speak, on every single swing and up and down, and he may be putting that in my spirit so that I'm more concerned with the most important legs and the most important runs and this concern with some of the most some of the least important ones. Let me show you another example. Again, this is a daily chart. Imagine if you were me. August 15th, I say, hey guys, it's time to sell because we're at one of our trend lines. Okay, then August 19th, oh guys, we're buying again. August 20th, oh guys, we're selling again. August 26th, oh guys, we're buying again. August 27th, oh guys, we're selling again. August 30th, oh guys, we're buying again. People are going to look at me like I'm crazy. And it makes sense to me because I'm a day trader. So I'm I'm okay with micro trading, but I'm trying to only take the most important legs and, and being led by the spirit of by the spirit of God as well. So I have data, but I also have the peace of God with saying that I don't think I'm going to miss it. And I don't feel it. I woke up this morning with a complete peace and confidence. And I know there's people in the telegram community room saying, you know, how come you're not trading? I got people this past weekend who were just yelling at me. You know, how can we, we're going to the moon and you're not guiding us. Guys, I'm guiding you. I told you that I'm not an XRP. That's my guidance. You want my guidance? I'm not an XRP. I'm not, I'm not buying that. I need to change. I need to see a change in behavior. If I get that change in behavior, I'm going to trade it. Okay. If I get it, but I don't have it. I don't have what I need. I don't trade based on price alone, like price and numbers. Let me say that again. I don't trade based on price numbers. I tell this to people in the community group all the time. What do I trade on? If you guys know me, I trade on price and behavior. Okay. If I get the right behavior at price, then it tells me that we're good because what's the point if we go up to a certain number, just say I'm here and I said, yeah, we're going up, but I know the very next day we're almost going to come down because there's no structure yet. We trade range to range, not just price to price to price. You can be right. Yeah. And if that's your style of trading, fine. You're, if you're taking four or five trades a week, that's great. But, but you got to think guys, I told people this, I said, before all of this started, months ago, when I first opened the community room, and that was the only platform I had, I told people, guys, this is Humonga Dunga. And it's like uh, we're surfers all on the beach. And you see this massive waves coming in. And I say, hey, guys, 
you shouldn't be trading right now. You shouldn't be out there surfing. Okay. Because humongous dung is coming in. Now I'm going to go out there and surf, but I'm only going to be, I, I'm going to be surfing these waves. Now I'd be fine taking those waves, but then I, as I'm paddling on the water, I see these brand new people who have never surfed in their life and they're following me. After a while, I start thinking this is not right. Okay. For me to either be making these things public or to be, um, to be doing it. And as I'm praying in my spirit, the more I, more I'm doing it, the more I feel like God's just saying, Hey, rather just be an example. Okay. If you say, but, but I'm like, Lord, but I, I want to trade and I don't want to miss it. Then the Lord's telling me, okay, fine. Just take the biggest waves. So now I'm standing on the beach and I got all these people and they're just watching me for what I'm trading, but I can help you drown. Okay. There's going to be people that will be drunk because either you're going to be asleep and you're going to miss some of my, um, you know, like this again, okay. I'm going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And you may be sleeping and you, you're going to be, you may be on the opposing side. Say you're selling at a time when now we're buying. This all happened like just from August 17th to August 31st. Okay. And so I get, I'm going to be having people from everywhere and it just stretches me. And it's also going to stress out you guys. There's so many people because there's a lot of emotions and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. And I need this. I need to sit down and have these conversations with you because I'm, I'm getting these in private. So I'm now I'm giving, I'm giving you guys my, these in, in public. So now we're on the water and I see this big wave coming in or there's some big waves coming in and you're like, yes, that's the one. And I'm guys, guys, that's not humonga dunga. I'm waiting for humonga dunga, the biggest wave of them all to be coming in or some of the bigger waves so we can have fun. And if I know a big wave is coming in, but there's another bigger wave behind it, then guess what I'm doing? I'm, I'm just gonna wait for the bigger waves because I have too many people at stake. And so if I say that, uh, that if I say that this is my attitude, this means to be, this mean, this also means I need to have a change in my trading behavior publicly at least. And I'll, I'll never tell everyone all of my little private trades that I make with some of my other accounts. I don't. Um, but you need to, you need to understand that for XRP in my trading account, I'm not an XRP because I think we're not there. Price is not set up correctly. We'll be going over this chart in just a few moments. Um, but I want to talk to you still some more. A lot of people are calling me and telling me that this is the first time they're experiencing these type of emotions. And what type of emotions are people experiencing? Well, they're talking about the same type of emotions that gamblers start feeling when they start either, uh, when they start battling the push and the, p the push and the pull of what it feels like to walk into a casino. Even though trading is not gambling, in some ways, everything is gambling. When you walk into a casino, you can sit down at any slot machine, put your quarter in any single one. Anyone could be a winner, but also anyone could be a loser. What is the difference between a professional gambler and a gambler? Well, professional gamblers, they're still gamblers. And at the end of the day, you're still guessing. You still are leaving it all up to the luck of the odds. However, the professional gambler is not worried about the emotion so much of gambling as a person who can become addicted to a casino because that person's like, oh my gosh, I can win. And they're, they're, they're betting when they should have walked away from the table. They're trading long after the game ended. Um, their, uh, their, their odds are not stacked in their favor. And so the difference between a gambler and uh, someone else, like just say a farmer who's doing the same thing. Well, that's a farmer's not a gambler. Oh, yes, they are. They put the seed in the ground and they're betting that the harvest and that the season's going to be a good season for the crop. They're going to, they're betting on that. It's not going to rain over rain, that it's going to rain just enough. They're betting on, they're hoping that the seeds that they planted will grow, that they're also going to taste really good. And there was enough nutrients in the ground. Um, if the, I used to uh, work in an industry where they were in uh, logistics, where they would reject whole crops just because they didn't have enough flavor. You know, it wasn't enough. So the farmers can lose so much or just break even, or they have a lot to gain. Every year that a farmer grows out, a farmer is a type of gambler in a way. They're betting. It's just, they do it a lot different. And yeah, they feel emotions. They're almost tied to their farm the same way that an investor would. So the difference between really a farmer, investor, and a gambler is not much except for one thing. The farmer is different than the gambler in the sense that they stack the odds in their favor. They have controls over the situation and they have controls over themselves. They choose when to plant the seeds. The investor chooses when he plants his investments. Yes, there are some things that are left to chance, but as many as the, of those things that there are, there are also many things you can do to minimize your risk being a farmer or being an investor. The gambler walks into the casino and he or she will feel so, uh, you know, pulled, pulled everywhere. Oh my gosh, I want to roll the dice. Oh my gosh, this person wins. And the more you see people winning, the more you start experiencing those emotions and, and going crazy when you see, when you see those. And when you're trading 
and you start seeing those long green candles and you're like, oh my gosh, look, we're, everyone's a winner. Everyone's making a million dollars or we're booming tonight because of what you heard in XRP. And yes, we are going to go up. We are. And, and will I be an XRP? Absolutely, I'll be an XRP. I'm not going to miss it. I already told people I have an investment bag that I don't touch with XRP in case we ever do launch. But at the moment, I don't feel that that's right. And my data for, my, for me, for my style, I don't see it happening. And I'm going to be explaining that. But I need you guys to know the psychology behind some of these things, behind what you're feeling, because some of you are feeling like you're in a casino. And let me show you what I mean. When you go onto a website like Coinbase, and you turn on your markets. Every day there's a winner and every day there's a loser. Look, today it was QNT, Queen, went up 36.28%. You could have been a winner and that's what they preach to you. And that's what you feel. Each Queen cost $342.10, but we went up 32% on your money. If you got in and you got out, if you got out. And now we can take a look at the top gainers. Look, QNT. OMG network, 20%. And you can see the, the coins that have went up in the in the last 24 hours. And then look at the losers. Some of the losers went down 11%, 10%, went down 3%. And then what was available? When ADA went down 1.19%, Solano. So you see every day somebody, you walk into the casino and you see somebody winning and somebody losing. But then when you when you walk into the, the casino and you actually go and look at the slot machine, this one is Solano. So we click on Solano and this is what you see. And you see these long uh, gains. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. Or you see them here. You don't realize what you're actually looking at. A lot of people have no idea. So I've been asking, people have been asking me to, can you please break down things? Well, we're going to break down some of those things. I can't promise we're going to break down all of them, but I'm, I'm letting you guys know. Look, what you're looking at is equivalent to like almost a, a five or three minute chart. Meaning each, each little squiggly of the squiggly line is about five minutes worth of time. Look at the time. 8.27 a.m. yesterday to 2.07. These are the defaults on here. This, this, is, this is how they draw you in. And this is why some of you guys can't sleep at night as well. September 5th at 8.20 a.m. to right now, September 6th. Current time of me filming this is 5.25 in the morning. Guys, I don't think they even give you an option on here to change that view from a chart. Okay. I don't, I don't think they even allow you to, to look past a day because they want you to see, oh, guys, it's going up because it may have gone up in the last 24 hours. Who can trade a 24-hour chart? That's like me trading a three- and five-minute chart. I'm not kidding you. Look, remember the shape. This is the same chart you were just looking at that we can actually chart. This is the same. You're going to be, if you're this type of trader who's only looking at those type of charts that they're showing you on those websites, then you might as well turn on a three-minute chart. Look. Three minute chart. Each one of these candles is three minutes worth of time. Okay, you're going up, you're going down, you're going up, you're going down, you're going up, you're going down every three minutes. Boom, 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 boom. And this is what they used to sell you. Now let's zoom out and take a look and see what we're actually really looking at. Mm -hmm. Look, my data doesn't even go that far. We have to go to a higher time frame, maybe a five minute chart. Oh, look, it's not so big anymore. How about this? How about a one hour chart? So all that selling you were, you were selling and, and really the trend is overall, overall the trend is up and we're just at a one hour chart. Let's look at a four hour chart. So really all that selling, what does what, what it amount to? So, you know, there's a buying and selling, but you're, you're buying and selling all within like a four hour time. If I were to call these and, and I did this publicly on YouTube, I'd be making, if I was only trading with those charts, I'd be making calls like crazy and people would never be able to sleep and it would consume my whole life as well. So. What am, I, what am I saying? There's an allure to these kinds of things. There's an, a, a very strong allure to these things. It draws you in. It makes you want to just be a part of the 24-hour casino all the time. That's what it does. And that's what it's doing to some of you guys. And you, you just need to understand that even though the Lord wants to help guide us on cryptocurrency, it can become more powerful than you are if you don't control it. It can become an addiction. These things can really take over your life, take over your, uh, start affecting you. Uh, if you have a job, it can affect you on your job. It can affect your family relationships, it, especially if you're if you're somebody who's never uh, gambled before, or um, you know you, you've, you're going to be fresh to a lot of these emotions. And these are absolutely the emotions that many of you guys are feeling. And I need to talk about it. And that's why we're we're, we're talking about it right now. It's not enough for me just to go over the charts because. And how can I say that? Because I am doing my 
I'm doing my best to make myself saying, letting you guys know publicly when I'm making a trade. If I'm not doing like a, a smaller intraday trade on maybe my leverage po po portfolio, but when I'm actually buying and selling cryptocurrencies that uh, I think are the ones that are the important ones, the game changers, when I'm not doing that, um, I'm surfing the big waves and I'm letting you guys know when I'm taking those waves and why I'm taking those waves as best possible. You have to have an attitude that you have conquered your emotions when trading. You have to trade based on based on either facts or you have to have a very, really good reason to take your, your trades. You're pulling the trigger and you need to realize that it's a powerful thing to hold a gun in your hand because you really only get one shot before you're at the control of the market. Once you enter a trade, you're not in control anymore until you get out. And unless you have the power to get out when you probably should, then you're at the mercy of the, the market in a way. That's kind of the reality of it. The market could go up, the market could go down, and you're at the mercy. When are you most in control? You're most in control when you're not in the trade. That's when you're most in control. Because before you're in control, you have the power to say no. You have the power to step back and take a look and say, hey, is, uh, is this a good prices or is this good setup? You have your chance. You have your chance at those times to ask yourself the most questions that you would ask before getting into the trade of your trade. You can you can stack the odds in your favor. You can determine if it's most risky or if it's not risky. One of the things that I'm looking at when I'm in the market is is to see what the level of strength and risk that we have of getting to our next desired ranges and what other factors are involved in in my trading. And you can only add them all up as best possible and start coming to some conclusions. And so you want my guidance? You have it. You have my website. I'm on patreon.com. There's a community room where you guys can talk to each other. I answer and respond best to my own website because you can actually go to a chart and just type right underneath it and it sends a notification to, to me. I also can respond publicly on to the community room, but a lot of my messages get lost in the shuffle as well as my notifications because there's thousands of messages that can come up over a few days. A group chat is not optimized for trading. When I opened the group chat, it was all I had at the time. And I could have restricted it just to my notifications only, but I wanted a place where people can go to make friends. That's the point of the community room. But the point for my trading is my website. So please remember, you can join and become a membership of the website, or you can still uh, always click on pinned at the top of the Telegram community room to get my XRP notifications. But I'll also always post my uh, XRP notifications there and letting people know when I'm getting in and out of XRP. And you can join that for free. But um, I do post other charts on my own website and send out notifications and you can get those instantly when I'm doing a chart. And there are times like this past weekend uh, when, I, uh, when I was in an area where I was not able to get a uh, signal. So I was not able to um, you know, do a lot of things, but I was still monitoring the markets. My advice, you guys can always do what you want. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. If you don't like what I'm doing, you guys don't have to follow me. Okay, you don't have to shadow me, but I think what I'm doing is right. So far, for everyone who's um, been following me, you shouldn't have lost any money. If you've been if you've been buying the sales, you guys should should be up a, quite a bit. I first got an XRP right about here, right about in the middle of that area, at the bottom, and I made a video about it, and we went on. Next time I got an XRP. was about right here at number one. I exited XRP just above that. I got an XLM way back here when we were around 28 cents. And I called the targets of 36 cents and we hit them exactly. I called those targets well in advance. I also called XDC here around seven cents with the target of 18 cents. XDC hit that target on August 21st before coming back down. If everyone has been following my trades that I make, you should be up some profit. Okay. But again, nobody has to follow my trades. This is just what I'm doing myself. I'm not telling anyone to buy or to sell. 
uh, even XRP, because again, this is not trading or financial advice. If you want to buy XRP and you're waiting for me to do it, then just be patient. But you can always buy anytime you want. And if you, if you don't want to, it's your money. Go, you can go ahead and do whatever you want with your money. And I'm fine one way or the other. I won't lose sleep over it. Okay. But I'm just letting you guys know when I do my in-depth video analysis, these are things that I see on price action. These are things that I see on the charts and I can't force it to do something else. You could say, well, you, you should buy, you should buy. Should I? If, if my data is showing me things are not right, I can't, what do you want me to do about it? I can't just make it unright. Or if I, if I don't have peace about it in my spirit, then I'm okay. Because what are the feeling? What are the emotions you're feeling when you feel these things? You're feeling what it feels like to lose, missed opportunity, and markets are moved on two main things: greed and fear. Fear of loss, and also fear of missed opportunity. Oh my gosh, XRP is going up! I need to get in! I need to get in now, because you you don't want to lose the opportunity. And it's okay to think like you don't want to lose opportunity. That that might be a, a great thought. But when does it cross over into, uh, into uncalled for emotions? When you see a long green candle, think about it. If you saw a long green candle, you're thinking, oh, man, the party's left without me. I better get in and I get in now because I don't want to miss it. And that's what you're feeling. But if you really felt that logically, you would have got in lower. You would have got in when when I was just sitting on the sidelines. You should have got in XRP at that time. You, you should have said, well, I'm going to get in my XRP now. Because if that's really your strongest thought, like, hey, I don't want to miss out, then you should be a longer term holder investor. Or you should maybe increase your, your gains for that bag of money that is just for long term holding. You should only be in those. Because that's telling you that, hey, I need to... I'm, I'm really concerned as a person about missing this opportunity. So I should just be buying and just holding. But because you're also wanting the greed of every up and down, you're going to be feeling those emotions. This is why more people buy at the top rather than buy at the bottom. Look, I'm going to tell you something I told somebody yesterday. Here's something. Take a look at this. Somebody said, I really want to buy. I wouldn't care about 130 if it goes up to 6 or $12, but I will be patient. If you really want to buy, you should buy because you know we're going to get there eventually, okay? But this is what I said in my response. I said, I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't care if I bought at $1.30 either, but I need to have a change in behavior. Until I get that change, the price is irrelevant to me. I'm looking at many failed signals and incorrect things on XRP. These are high warning signs. I have a special method of analyzing price action. Rather than base it on a specific price number, there should be a certain behavior. And when price is not acting correctly, something is very off. So I'm out. But if price comes back into behavior, then I'll be very interested in those price ranges, even if they are higher. However, at the moment, it's I really believe that we'll be able to get better prices that are much lower. If I buy now and price cannot sustain itself, then I'll be worried that it will fall even if it rises now, that's how uh, that's now how I like to trade. I trade on price structure. And I do. If I if I have the setup that I want and I know that something's happening and it lines up with what I feel is right in my spirit, then I'll pull the trigger. That's how I need to trade. And when I do make those calls, I think there's enough time. Because again, guys. If I'm making every single one of these calls, up, down, up, down. If I say buy and we go up, you're happy. But if we if we go back down, you're not happy. But if I say, okay, I'll buy in here, and then we go up and then we come back down, then you're not happy either. And so I did something with this chart. 